Mas... <risos> Nada. Shalom, welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with Chabad of Delmar, and I brought my own granddaughter <laughs> with us today, Chaya Simon, from all the way from Canada to test out the food with Mark Ronich, our co-host from Statewide News Service and jbiztechvalley.com. I thought maybe you brought us to a nice kiddish. Well, you know, it's, <laughs> it's coming to that point. We have uh, foods from Beigel's uh, Bakery, Manischewitz, and Starkist, and we're going to talk about all these products with Marty Stein, who's from Colony and a judge at, from Kosherfest, and is also a salesman with the Kahi uh, distributors. Did I get all that right? Kahi food distributors. That's right. Kahi distributors. Okay. So welcome to the show again. It's nice great to, to have here. you here. And uh, you know, I wanted to let everyone know that Beigel's has been extremely generous with their portions that they uh, gave us for the show. But this is everything that they, mo mostly what they've had in the, uh, at Kosher Fest. They have a huge display. They're one of the larger displays in, at Kosher Fest. And I just, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, they have a lot of a big variety, wide variety of products. Uh, so they have, sh you know, sugar, it's just not bread is what I'm trying to, I guess oh, what I I'm think, trying to say. Yeah. It's just not your normal white bread. I think, Mark, that's important for people to know. I mean, we see, a, a, you know, it's a very nice variety of food products we see here. But if you were in Kosher Fest, which was in the Meadowlands, and that's a huge auditorium, and I do mean huge, and there was all kinds of bakeries. Marty, you know how many, you were to judge, how many bakeries? Quite a few. Bakeries. Uh, this bakeries was just one there. small and portion of the yeah, bakery a small portion. Industry. So what we're showing is just to keep in mind that there's one kosher bakery, and there's so many different varieties as you're right. seeing here. Mark is and, telling you. And me. this uh, white bread is parva. Usually white bread you think is made with milk, but mm -hmm. this is parva and it's pas Israel and it's yoshan. Yoshan is a different idea. It means old, literally. It just means they added times of Israel, but even the applies now today. They didn't want to have new bread after Passover, new wheat products. So that's why it's Yoshan. But again, why it's par of? Because, of course, people have a roast beef sandwich. So you don't want to have a roast beef sandwich. I mean, or whatever, food, uh, yeah. dinner time with meat. You don't want to have a milk, a, a dairy bread together with your meat dinner. So that's right. why it's better for... But sometimes it confuses people if they're using, if they have white bread and with roast beef sandwich, and then all of a sudden you think, oh, you know, you go out, you know, someplace and then you say, oh, is, this might mm -hmm. be acceptable. You know, it's sort of like the, the reason why they don't like, why the Jewish community, portions of the Jewish community don't like uh, uh, the faux lobster and the faux crab because even though it's just white fish, that's... You know, do you, you you know, know. Mark, the old sta saying sta is fitting right now. Let the consumer be aware. Yeah. But it really is the kosher consumer because we can have different products really in the same manufacturer, and one could be OU, meaning just kosher, one could be dairy, and one product line could be non-kosher. It's perfectly legal, mm -hmm. and, you know, and the people always making mistakes and saying, well, I just took that part. I knew that product, and... You know, the, the manufacturer, and like you say, you make, oh, this well, dairy I, and this not. One time my brother came home with a Kraft cheese, American cheese, because mm -hmm. it, it had the K on it, yeah. and for Kraft, not for kosher. <laughs> so he, my mother took, told him to go right back to the store and get it yeah. out of the house. <laughs> but anyway, this, was, uh, this is whole wheat bread, and this is par of... People uh, could see that. And this is also Yoshan and uh, Parov, and it has a well, couple of... Well, there's another point here also. I mean, I'm the rabbi, so I, of course I care about kosher. But on the other hand, I mean, you have to deal with people. You can't force people to eat what they don't want to eat. Right. And we try to make kosher accessible to every person. And as you're going to see now, there's so much whole wheat people are into being healthy. It's a very important thing. Mm -hmm. We're going to see things sugar-free and gluten-free. And again, the manufacturers are... Uh, they're, they're baking here, they're mm -hmm. manufacturing things that are good for all the consumers, and these are ma you know, major trends in, in consumerism and food, and they're and, providing those needs. And this is whole wheat rye that we have, and they have on the other side here, this is like four hectares 
kosher symbols. Kosher symbols, kosher certification symbols, all along the line here. So, I, Marty, why don't you, you know, yeah. this is for anyone who. <laughs> it's uh, certain people are prone to certain hexures and they're trying to satisfy the majority of the, the potential customers. That's why they have so many hexures. Right. Hopefully, they'll get it. Everybody will be satisfied. <laughs> That's not what's happened, but it yeah. usually does. Especially with to. four. So, it's unusual to see four on one product. <laughs> so then we have, and, and Bagels also makes, you know, the traditional challah, but they also have the breakaway challah. And uh, the, the breakaway challah is where you uh, literally, when you take this out of the bag, you can see it it's comes in pieces, and then you just break off a piece, and then you say hamotzi on on the bread, you say hamotzi, and then you have, this is your piece of, uh, of challah. Oh, good. So, can't Everybody glue it gets their own portion without cutting it up. That's right. So, that's, that's good. good. So, anyway, so that, that that's a convenience, and that's how... You have anything that Chaya could taste test for I us do. over here? I brought I her. I do. She's, she's getting hungry, she said. I well, you know if her mother will uh, like it for destroying her uh, dinner. Well, but. we have... Uh, Ruggaluk, you like Ruggaluk? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Okay. Well, these are Ruggaluk chocolate and cinnamon. Do you like, which one do you like? Mm. Chocolate or cinnamon? Mm -hmm. We have two different chocolate. kinds in this one box. We have two different kinds. Really? They come all in one box? Yeah. Chocolate. The one side. Chocolate or cinnamon. cinnamon. Yeah, we'll show the audience. First, we'll show the audience that it, the That's cinnamon are up here and the chocolate is over here. So, Chaya, why don't you take? Take one. You want say, a bracha. The, say a nice bracha for everybody. All right, now she's our official taste test. Okay, she should beautiful. be the judge at Kosher Fest. Is that good? Mmm. Yeah. All right. You like go. it? It tastes good? Go hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's, so they, you know, Bagels tries to get as many different uh, flavors for different tastes into one package. So over here, you might understand that, you know, we all know about black and white cookies. You know, that's, a ve that's very common. You see it many diners and you see it uh, various other uh, uh, parties and events and, you know, so they ha always have these. But for those who really want to support Israel, and really are a big fan. Look at what they did. I think this is cool. They have the blue and the white <laughs> so that they have the... Um, Jewish colors. The, the colors of the Israeli flag, you know, and Jewish colors, yes. So that's... Um, and then they, if for those who can't make up their mind as to which colors they want, and you have a party, yeah. let's say, you want to try one of these? Yeah, or you one of those where you're getting full. <laughs> okay. Try one of these. It's a... Gastronomic extravaganza here. Okay, so we have the, all these colorful. Now, I went to the University at Albany, and University at Albany, their school colors are purple and gold. Oh, there so you go. I think that, you sh that they should be marketing this to the uh, Jewish Albany. community at University at Albany. Uh, well, they can go to the non Jewish community if it's all That's the right. Albany. But uh, certainly Shabbos House. And, okay, of so. Course. Now they have a lot of sugar-free products at Beigel's, which I was very impressed about when I went there. You know, sometimes, you know, you don't want to taste... Where is the factory? Then? The factory is on Waverly Place, and it's right near where the Brooklyn Nets play, in, but it's also right near Crown Heights as well. All right, very and good. Uh, that's one of the... Uh, Again, you know, I just I would reiterate so. to every person, you know, that people think that kosher, maybe from their homes or... Bygone days is just a piece of gefilte fish and a piece of matzah. Again, just to keep in mind that you have all the varieties of taste that you want. And number two, if you want to be healthy, and so many people are today, you know, we can talk about that. Marty, talk about the sugar-free and gluten-free. Sugar-free is a, a very uh, popular category. Certain people, of course, are not allowed sugar. So it it's, uh, fills, fulfills the need for their, their uh they're Dietary right. constraints, yeah. So we'll take a piece of the uh, mandel uh, bread. Sure. It, it, it's cut, yeah. Okay. Take a, it's cut. Take a piece. Oh boy. You know. Okay. And I'll take a piece. You say mazonos on it? Yeah, that's good. 
a main eskus in the heat. You see, in Yiddish, eat with health. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not oh, sugar free, good. gluten free. You don't even mind that it's sugar free. This. Maybe I should try some of this fish. <laughs> Oh, this is good. Mark really did bring us to a kiddish here. Mm -hmm. mm. Now, you should always know. Oh, wait a minute. First, I want to continue on the sugar free path. All right, good. You have cookies, Windsor cookies, that are sugar free. And if you like Windsor cookies, it's great because they're really used to be loaded with sugar. But if you, we can get a close up there. There you go. That's yeah, to me, it's remarkable. So, you know that people do. There are a lot of sugar free, and you know. And then you have. And they have good taste. Yeah, it's very good taste. And here's the seven layer cake that's sugar free. And I can't wait to get home and eat all yeah. this stuff. Mark, I thought you were on a diet. Well, I seafood diet. I see food and I eat it. <laughs> So, and then there's other, you like that one, huh? <laughs> here's, and here's marble cake that's also, you know, beautiful. I mean, it's just, if you, you know, you could see the, the marble, the marbleization in the, in the front there. And it's just a, you know, they just package everything so nicely at Beigel's. And, you know, I had a tour of the factory and I was very impressed with the way they, the way they manufacture things and how organized and orderly and clean the, the factory was. I mean, I'm, you know, I was surprised. <laughs> I don't know why I should be surprised, but I was surprised because, you know, kosher means clean, right? And right, so there to, you go. So. Um, well, you don't want any bugs in it either, just not the kosher. Right. So then they got, do you know what this is? This, this is babka cake, isn't it? This is like a chocolate yeah. roll. It looks like a babka cake. Yeah, babka. This is like a chocolate yeah. roll. Doesn't he have a label on the back? Maybe? Well, I think we fall, fell Maybe off. Maybe it came off the line and before they put the label this on it. This is hot off the press, hot off the line, yes. Yeah. This is something it's I wanted. chocolate babka. Look at how beautiful that. Full of chocolate. Right. You'll a lot you of get filling, a, filling you know, in it. And it's not sugar free. It, it does Regular. have sugar in it, yeah. but I just. <laughs> I was like a kid in the candy store when I was going around there. They have this melt-away babka cake, which, you know, you could see even on, it's over there on the picture behind you. It's next to the red and white. Um, but that's what this is in real life, not just in a picture. It's really so, attractive packaging. Yes. Yes, so. Um, and then we got these grab-and-go. Why don't you talk about these, Marty? Grab-and-go is very popular for lunch boxes or to take back to the office. And you do have an outstanding variety of product here. here. This is a confetti type pastry. Here's a black and white. Yeah. And what is this one? This is uh, vanilla. Danish and chocolate. Right. Is that cinnamon Danish yeah. also? Okay, cinnamon Danish. Doesn't look like anybody's gonna be going hungry here. <laughs> and this is just something else, uh, like a horn, horn tape. Uh-huh. Horn shape. Product. Pastry swirl, it's called. Yeah. Pastry swirl. So you really should have. Uh, is this picture on your screen is probably all where my picture is. This is what a the, nicer without the packaging. Right. That's of what Mark was just talking about. So that was. Good. So that's what we have for the uh, from uh, Beigels. I mean, it's just. Oh, and then of course you want to talk about the rainbow bars, right? You like rainbow bars. <laughs> Yeah. You do. You're going to destroy her dinner over here. I don't know what her mother's well, going to say. I don't know either, but <laughs> I'll have to take the lumps. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to package. Very nicely packaged. Very yes. Should be a more smaller piece of thing. Right, but we'll you may. break yeah. it off. Take that. Mmm. And this is. Hey, what do you say, Chaya? What are you? All this food. What do you think? Yeah, it's, it's better like it? for dinner than a than a sandwich. See how beautiful that is. And uh, so that's the uh, rainbow bars. Mm, beautiful. You want to try some? No thanks. Okay. No reflection <laughs> on the product. Yeah. <laughs> We're all on a diets, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so but there is breads there. Now going to the breads. The breads, yeah. 
Now, you should always buy bread when it's labeled kosher. You, should, you know, they, a lot of times in supermarkets, they'll have their, the supermarket bread that'll be... Uh, right on the racks. Right on the racks, and it won't be... Uh, and it won't be labeled, and people might think, oh, well, it's just bread, you know, I think I can, you know, fake it, <laughs> or I'll just cheat or something, but this is yeah. from Beigel's, and they make a beautiful pumpernickel, and this is, yeah, is good, pumpernickel it? bread, and it's just... Sometimes it's just a little brown, but this looks like a real pumpernickel. It's real pumpernickel, so... Can we taste? Uh, no, no, we have to wash. I mean, oh, well, so we should. It's a whole big uh, okay. thing. Okay. Okay. So we'll just show it. Okay. Leave it be. And then the, we talked about the whole wheat, and this is the another type of uh, a bread. But you could see how the texture in here. I mean, if, first of all, I wish we had smell o vision because <laughs> it just smells beautiful. It's just you know, the aroma is really outstanding. Yeah. You know, so. I, I, this was, uh, when I went to pick this stuff up, it was wafting through the car, the odor. Really? And I was just like, that. wow. No. You don't have that, any, that much anymore. This was, it must have been a real that, bakery. It was an absolutely real bakery. You know, like yes, a New York bakery. I saw right? everyone, I saw the people making the dough, you know, putting it through the machine, you know, the oven, and, you know, but that's huge. Uh, well, we had inside. our own kosher supervision there now. That's it. You got yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, Mark uh, putting his, his own supervision. And then they have this uh, onion onion bread, which you have, if you have tasted really an nice. onion bagel, this is a large version of an onion bagel. <laughs> and we can open it up, and you can see how white that flour is. Just incredible. Just incredible. Tastes great. All right, so... You showed everything from the bagels? Well, we got the, and we got the rugaluch here, which everyone really knows what rugaluch is. And I think that's the, uh, I think that's everything. It covered everything. I think that's everything. So they have two different types of chocolate rugaluch. One's a pastry rugaluch and one's a rugaluch, <laughs> rugaluch, <laughs> regular rugaluch. You can see the difference there. So I wanted to... Uh, demonstrate that there's more other types of rugaluch. So I guess you can go online and look at more products. And you know, certainly we have the products here on this beautiful uh, stand that they, that they gave us. Um, mm -hmm. Now I wanted to go through, Starkist sent us some products. And uh, some of this was not at Kosher Fest. And I pointed that out to them. How do I know it wasn't at Kosher Fest? because some of the products don't have the OU on it. Now, or any other hexer. Or any other hexer. Yeah. <laughs> so they, um, but you know, the hexer that Starkist does go by is, um, is the OU, and they have it in really small, very small letters. You're not gonna even be able to see this, but I'll hold this up here. And right over here is the, uh, there's OU Parv right over there. So it's right under the T in the last final T in Starkist. And you have a very similar, you know, the packaging is different, but you'll see that on this one, under the final T, there is no hex, there's no writing, there's nothing, it's just blank. And the packaging, you don't have this yellow band on here, you don't have, you have the different, two different pictures, over there, the chunk light tuna in water, you know, even says, says it in a different format. But they're both made in the same factory in Ecuador. And I tell you, I called them and asked about it, and they said, even though it's not OU, it's still kosher. And I said, no, it's not. You couldn't get this into Kosher Fest if you tried without the, without the hexure on it. <laughs> so I knew that they didn't have it at, the, at Kosher Fest. So we, but um, many of the, so you got to be very careful when you go through and you try to, um, here's the, on, underneath Again, the final T is the power of OU power of underneath this one. But when you get into this, these tuna creations, I have not found one of them that has the kosher 
uh, any kosher symbols. Well, see, it. you know, Mark, you're just uh, illustrating what I was talking about before. You say one product name, Starkist, and you say, okay, I know Starkist, one of them I picked up is kosher. And you just, like I say, the kosher consumer beware every time you buy a different little product, even though it may be like you're saying, a picture different than mm -hmm. ones with water, ones with oil. It could be very much of a different, um, and a whole different story. Right. So therefore you have to really be So you have be to careful. be careful and don't just take it, you know, as gospel, I guess, if you think that it's a brand name, that all of it's going to be the same. Uh, there's, there are many products that, you know, have come from different factories. And they and one factory would be kosher because they uh, and because they don't mix milk and meat, and another factory won't be kosher. The packaging looks packaging very, very might look differently and could be know. the same even. So sometimes, yeah, sometimes you know, sometimes a quart size, a half gallon size. Right. Say, well, one's the same thing. And so they just you know, so when I so they sent me these, and I told them that I wasn't going to uh, promote this as being you know at kosher fest, and they said, okay, well, you know, so be it. <laughs> so in a way, it's a learning moment. This so, way it shows, you yeah. know, exactly the point. That yeah. That's very good they sent it, that, you know, one manufacturer, you know, you say, okay, Starkus, I bought one, but it could be uh, others, mm -hmm. so it's now very important for us. Their tuna is uh, kosher for Passover, and it says, oh, so, it's so small, O-U-P, so... You, so the O-U-P, when it says kosher for Passover, you have to assume the P is for Passover, not parav. Yeah, well, the would, capital P. Yeah, it would say parv if it was parv, I guess. It would say it, it yeah. would spell it out. And right. just don't also say kosher for Passover. This, if you want to show it to, in our camera, spells kosher for Passover, not that all star kissed is kosher for Passover. I don't know, you right. can maybe read it, it's Hebrew, but it's in those red letters. That's right, the red box. Kosher. That's why it has to say kosher for Passover. We can't say, again, assume, well, one star kissed is kosher for Passover, it all is. Don't make that assumption. And you should also know that, I guess for camping trips, they have this pop top here, and that's good for camping, where this you need a, a can opener to take the lid off. So anyway, that, that was one of the good things about... Uh, you know, the star kiss thing I found was fascinating, so I took one. <laughs> we'll give them credit for putting the hexers With permission. On the front of the package. It's Some of the companies put the hexers on the back of the package. Yes, but you have to look, and I, yeah. believe me, I went with a magnifying glass, and I looked, and I looked, <laughs> and I couldn't find anything. You definitely need a magnifying glass And I think they, they admitted that the, it was, you know, <laughs> yeah. that it, they said it was kosher, but it really, you know, I said it has to be marked as such, and I think I was... I think it was above their pay grade when I was talking to them. So, uh, all right. Well, Manischewitz also were very nice to us. They sent uh, some uh, products over, and uh, this is uh, gluten-free, certified gluten-free noodles. Uh, again, Marty, tell us about gluten-free. I said it again a few times. Gluten-free is one of the fastest-growing category in the grocery industry, and uh, the kosher industry is. Uh, matching other industries with their variety and, and it's kosher uh, kosher gluten-free is really popular now and these are products that will, will be introduced for passover 2015. oh uh, 2015 right. well stay tuned as you would say right. well it's so, always interesting you know people always think ahead of you know like a week before passover what am i going to eat and they're already thinking a half a year ahead of time so this so is this, this, so Planning for noodles. this is done many, many months in advance. Yeah, yeah. And this is the uh, raisin and spice cookies, which are, which we'll have our taste tester <laughs> see how she <laughs> likes these and once they get this open. And again, this is coach for Passover. Why don't you have a cookie take there. one and let us know how you like it. This is Very good? Yeah. Okay. Raisin and spice cookies. You taste the <laughs> spice of the raisins. Do they or? taste good? <laughs> Mostly the spice, but I think like it. Yeah, good. Good, good. Now we have a lot of, again, gluten-free matzahs. Matzahs are going to be uh, very, uh, gluten-free matzahs are going to be very popular, I guess. Yeah, but they can't be made, what are they made out of, Mark? Because they can't be made out of wheat, which is your normal matzah. Right. You know, it's, it's the main product. Maybe cornstarch? That's a cracker. 
Yeah. Have my gluten free. Tapioca starch, water, potato starch, eggs, dehydrated potatoes, palm oil, sugar, and salt. Contains and, eggs. But no wheat. No wheat. So I guess. That's what makes it gluten free. Mm. And th this is made of, uh, yeah, again, the tapioca starch probably. Uh, as a base. Is the base instead of the wheat. So that's mm. the. Uh, I mean, there are people more gluten-free, I mean, and they need products and they want to eat kosher. Mm -hmm. It's just, let's say, in the kosher market also. Yeah, let's get a close-up of all yeah, of these. Yeah, it looks good. We'll build a little uh, pyramid. pyramid here. Right. Right. Okay, so I guess not. Okay. <laughs> so we'll get these two gluten-free ones, and then we'll put in these two gluten-free ones, and then we'll... Swap out the garlic and rosemary. Again, I mean, I've saying it a number of times, well, but I think it's important. To, not only is it gluten free, but look how many different varieties you don't have to have just plain matzah and gefilte fish. Right. Well, now you know, you, that's very important. You were talking earlier about that's very important to have a gluten free matzah ball mix. So that's a very what uh, kind big, of Jew doesn't eat a matzah right, ball? It's a very big <laughs> category. Yeah, but let's get a close up of this box with the gluten free matzah and. I think that's something that people should look at on their shelves. I think uh, the Price Chopper locally yeah. carries this one. It will be probably carried. Yeah. You know, yeah. Sure. I think I've seen it already. And then we have a return visit from our favorite carrot cake macaroons. Well, Mark, you <laughs> like this. I, know. I love these. I just sit there they're and really pop good. them in my mouth. I mean, they're, they're really good. They're phenomenal. So this was really a treat and a half. And I want to thank all of our corporate sponsors, you might say, <laughs> uh, for sending along all the products from Beigels and Manischewitz and even Starkist. So uh, this, is, this was a wonderful treat. So Rabbi, you have right, closing remarks? Well, thank thank Chaya for Chaya? being our official taste tester on the okay. Jewish View. You come back anytime, Chaya. <laughs> Especially okay. when we have food. That's in any right. case, Marty, thank you very much. Nice you know, being you're here. saying Yiddish. Ask right. So everybody should just eat, eat kosher, and do it with good health. Oh, man.